Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Global Wrestling News presented by Adidas Wrestling. I'm Scott Casper. To my left, as always, Tony Hager. Well, the University of Nebraska has announced the hiring of Kendrick Maple as an assistant coach. To kick off the show, we have the U.S. Open champ, World Team Trials finalist, and former Purdue assistant Kendrick Maple. Kendrick, welcome to the show. Nice to, nice to be talking to you again. Well, about six, seven days ago, the news came out from the University of Nebraska and head coach there, Mark Manning, that he had hired you as an assistant coach. Let's talk about that. First of all, how did it happen? Uh, it was kind of a out-of-the-nowhere thing. I was very happy uh, where I was at at Purdue, um, and Coach Manning called. He uh, offered the job, and it was uh, a whirlwind. It had to be decided pretty soon, and... Uh, it was through a lot of play, a lot of prayers and a lot of talking to my mentors that we were able to make the decision. What were the biggest factors in your decision? Um, a lot of things. It, it, there was a lot of logistical things, mainly just, uh, like I said, prayers, but also it was close to my family. Um, I believed in what Manning was saying. Uh, he gave me, gave me his vision for the team um, and everything he's trying to work for and his philosophy, and I, I'm bought in 100% to that. He, it's something I can get behind. We're talking with Kendrick Maple, new assistant coach at Nebraska. Tony Ursland really made his name there. What was his reaction when you told him? Uh, you know, there's a lot of emotions. Uh, with college wrestling and coaching, it's, it's, a, it's a business world. Uh, inside is something that's so personal with relationships. So we grew, up, we grew very close over the year. Uh, I think our staff at Purdue was awesome. I couldn't ask for anything better. Um, and I think... He handled it exactly how I would hope he would. You know, he was very understanding. Obviously, he tried to keep me, um, but at the same time, it, it was a choice for my family, and that's my number one loyalty. Uh, but it was hard. It was hard to leave him and uh, Tyro Todd and Jake Suflum because they're such great people. But I know they're going to find someone hopefully twice as good as me, and Purdue will keep climbing where they were. On the 30th, some five days ago, you tweeted, I am a ne- now a Nebraska Husker. Did you ever think you'd say that? I, wasn't wasn't Nebraska on the table during your time of choosing where you were going to go? I think it was. Yes, they were. There's some bad blood there. We uh, So uh, me and Coach Manny, we joke about it a lot. So he recruited me uh, out of high school, but he stopped calling me as I was about to go to my uh, – my visit and it wasn't like uh you know and it, we didn't go in a bad way at all but it was it was very funny when he called me for this job i was like didn't you uh deny me once so uh but it was good there's no <laughs> it's all water under the bridge and i completely understand and uh it's real funny though how things turn out but no i did not expect to be at nebraska but i'm very glad to be here um you know it's a a program that has something to prove we're, we're right there and i think hopefully i can help us take us to the top a lot of guys on the senior circuit are not full-time assistants, okay? Now, you and I talked a little bit about this off-air, but I know you've improved, but how have you improved so much as an athlete when most of your time has been dedicated to the success of others? Let's face it, you helped get three guys to the NCAAs last year. Yeah, it's definitely tough, and I've, I've even had a lot of people tell me that it can't be done, um, but, you know, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the sport. You know, we, we go up against all odds all the time, and so... It's, it's just something you just got to work hard at. You got to take time to be a little selfish sometimes, which is sometimes hard to do, especially with college guys. But um, just getting there and getting good training. And fortunately, I had great training partners. I had Jake Suflone and Griffin Perry and guys like that at Purdue that really helped me. And I'm looking forward to working with James and Jordan and all the young guys at the Nebraska team. That should be great. So I, I think it's definitely doable, and it'll help me accomplish my goals. So James and Jordan, James Green, Jordan Burroughs, have a very similar style. Yours is a little different. What areas do you think you'll improve the most by working with them? Man, I don't see how I can't improve in every area. <laughs> they're just they're, they're such great athletes and great people at that. So um, as far as my style, you know, I think Jordan and Jane, James both had to adapt to different. They're both athletic. They both got a really amazing offense. They had to learn to be able to hold guys off, learn to hand fight, and uh, that's something – you know, I strive, I need to uh, build upon. Um, other than that, man, I just, like I said, pick, the, pick their brains. I hope to learn in every area. Kendrick, it's always good to talk to you, and every time we do, it seems to be the news keeps getting better and better and better. Congratulations to you and Jordan and Kiner. Um, is there anything, any breaking news there on the, the parenting front, or are we good where we're at right now? 
Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll call you when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, call me after it happens. That's probably. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that probably is better. <laughs> Much respect, bud. Congratulations. I hope you enjoyed the Nike Hot Seat experience today. I wish I could tell you it came with a pair of free Nike shoes, but that promotion is not going on right now. So you're gonna have oh, to yeah. you're gonna have to settle for best wishes from me and everybody at Takedown. That'll work. Thanks, Scott. They're bringing in Maple, a high level freestyle wrestler. He's got some college experience, obviously at Purdue. I think this is a no brainer here. College coaching experience. He had college experience as a student. Yeah, yeah. the coaching experience as well with him being on the freestyle circuit now. I mean, this is a no-brainer for Nebraska. Does Nebraska now have the top training center in the country? Well, this this makes it – they have four. They had four finalists from the World Team Trials on their staff. I mean, if you're a kid that has aspirations to be an Olympic champ or wrestle you know, wrestle at the highest level, I mean, why would, why would you not go to Nebraska? They've got, they've got the four guys that really almost – one guy just didn't get it done or two guys didn't get it done, but – um, hard to hard to compete against James Green, Jordan Burroughs. Last week, the open mat broke the news about the NWCA's cancellation of the national duels. We'll talk with NWCA President Mike Moyer after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News, brought to you by Coca-Cola. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow-blue LED lighting, and you should too. The National Wrestling Coaches Association will no longer produce the Division I National Duels, an event that has gone from bracket format to a bowl format and has gone up and down in popularity with coaches and fans. The Open Mat recently broke the news that the event would be canceled for the upcoming year. Here to talk about that decision is NWCA President Mike Moyer. Topic of discussion today, at least one of them, will be the Division I National Duels. You made the decision to cancel them for calendar year of 2018, 2017, 2018, as it were. Talk to us about making that decision. Well, it was a really tough decision. Um, the, the, essentially what we've done is we've suspended it for one year so we can have a lot more discussion around the format. You know, what, what, what's, what's so challenging is when you look at the circumstances of our 77 Division I programs, their circumstances are so varied. And so it's really challenging trying to get all the coaches to agree to a standardized format. And, you know, the lens that many of them look through is just so different. So, you know, we, we've, we've accomplished so much through this event. You know, last year, for example, we had the largest crowd in the history of Oklahoma State to watch a sporting event in Gallagher Iba Arena. We had, you know, international companies that were investing in wrestling as naming rights sponsors. We had a lot of great dual meets at other locations. You know, some of the other um, uh, duels that we had. I was at the the Lehigh Rutgers duel, which was a great crowd. And you know, all around the country, um, we it's this this event did a lot to really promote and showcase our sport. But there were really two primary challenges. The one, of course, is just trying to come up with a standardized format that everyone would agree to. And, and the second big one is more and more Division I conferences have these pre-existing media rights agreements. And so the challenge we have is to appease the naming rights sponsors they're looking for television commercials and visibility on television and, and, and uh, sponsorship 
opportunities in the venues themselves. And more of these conferences have these pre-existing media rights agreements that, that encompass so much more than just home intercollegiate competitions. They now encompass you know, uh, uh, exhibitions and practices and virtually anything that happens on their campuses. And so it wouldn't be so challenging if it was just one network. So two years ago when the Big Ten teams hosted, you know, all the Big Ten teams are partnered with the Big Ten network. So it still works. But when you go to the non-Big Ten campuses, you could be dealing with three or four or five different networks and it makes it virtually impossible to uh, to do the sponsorship fulfillment part of it. We're talking with Mike Moyer about the national duels and the decision to at least cancel the 2017-2018 uh, national duels, Division One. The multi-level uh, multi uh, division uh, national duels are still uh, still in, uh, going to happen. I understand, and and it's been very successful finding a home and and uh, making it a destination point for many schools and athletes. How difficult was it to make coaches happy with scheduling and, and while also keeping fans happy, Mike? Well, again, our coaches are under enormous pressure, and many of them to compete at the very highest level. And so, again, their, their, their needs are it, they're very diverse. And, and um, it's, just, you know, it's just challenging. You know, can we reach a compromise? I think absolutely we can. We just need a lot more dialogue. You know, we need a lot more communication and, and uh, you know, we just we didn't want to be putting a square peg through a round hole. So we felt it was best to just suspend it for a year and to see if we can work diligently over this next year to come up with something that makes more sense that we can get more more um, more of our top coaches to buy into. Really, not more of them, all of them for it to really be a national dual meet championship. We need participation by all of them. And, and so there's more work to be done, and we're committed to doing that. And, you know, hopefully we can, we can uh, reach a compromise that everybody feels good about. I know it's a fan favorite, Mike, and I know you understand that, but it's, it's got to be something we intend to bring back or be resurrected in years to come. Mike, thank you for the time and the candid answers. We appreciate that, and I hope you enjoyed your time in our Nike hot seat. No, I appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for all you do to promote wrestling as well. Tony, what are your thoughts on this event going away? Well, I think the, the writing was on the wall, right? I mean, Kale Sanderson has expressed his disinterest of this 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 event. Uh, Tom Brands has pulled out of it a couple of times. Some other coaches have not wanted to be in it. You know, they, they keep on changing the format, and I just feel like the more and more you change the sport, the fans get, you know, they're just not excited about it, I guess. So, I mean, I... I think this was a long time coming. I mean, I I hate seeing dual meet opportunities go away, especially where we have an opportunity to, to crown a champion. And four or five dissenting coaches, what about the other 70 coaches that aren't dissenting and want to be a part of it? And they would relish the opportunity. Yeah, this is... Um the dual fam format is what I love. I mean, I preach it on the show, radio show all the time. I mean, that Okie State-Penn State duel was one of the most hyped duels that we've had for probably the last five years. Everyone was talking about the duel. Everybody wanted to watch yeah, it. But nobody could watch yeah, it. Yeah, the broadcast failed. I mean, for me, that really casted a, a bigger shadow over the actual event. I mean, Penn State rolled with it, but I mean, this is uh, something that that broadcast, you know, the lawsuit, the broadcast failed. It, it mm -hmm. really shined a, a a bruise on our sport. All right, recruiting season never ends, but July 1st marks the first time offers can officially be on the table for juniors. And guess what? We've got commitments. That's after the break. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Pure and Clean Sport. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made from scratch two topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one.
What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, check them out. PureandCleanSports.com. Well, Pan Am Junior Gold Medalist and Illinois State Champ, Anthony Cassiope, has flipped his commitment from Northwestern to Iowa. The 32nd ranked senior is a Greco and Freestyle All-American and projects out at heavyweight for the Hawkeyes. Tony, good news, huh? Yeah, this is a, this is a kid that I think it, everyone thought was like off the table, but there's been rumblings in the last six months that he was wanting to open up his recruiting back up. I mean, he's a top five heavyweight at one point. I mean, this right now, um, you know, top 30 in the country. Um, and his in this class, so I think the Hawkeyes they've got a guy named Aaron Costello already on, on, campus, on right? campus. So this will be two guys that will you know, iron sharpens iron. We'll we'll see who can <laughs> you know rise to the top here. But Iowa, this was a get needed to get with Sam Stoll out of out of town here in a couple of years. Got to have these two guys in the room. College wrestling is starting to look a lot like the NBA. What can the NCAA do to create more parity? Or can they? Well, super teams are, are big in every sport, but wrestling it has just a, a smaller talent pool. So the in football and basketball, there's elite guys everywhere. There's right. tons to pick from, and you know there's not really – there is some development that goes on in, in wrestling. There's just that smaller talent pool. So the smaller schools are, are trying to, to claw and, and for the kids that are not really elite status, and they have to develop them. With these super teams, though, they're getting the, 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 the elite guys. They don't have to do a whole lot of work with them. They just have to make sure they're off the mats studies are, are good to go and then they really kind of they just shine so there's nothing that really wrestling can do to stop these super teams because there's just not enough talent out there for them to, to pick up and now you got mark perry in the uh, regional training center and the hawkeyes have a sick recruiting class for this year and already starting to build for 2018 with this commitment and nelson brands yeah th these two i mean already kicks off 2018 really well 2017 17 is just it is. It's sick. I mean, they got Justin Mejia to flip from. You know, they were at. He was at Iowa, flipped to Illinois. Now back to Iowa. Mark Perry, huge uh, reason I think for that to happen. I think so too. You know, I thought money was going to be an issue. I thought he was maybe going to go to Minnesota, but he's coming back to Iowa uh, for a reason. That's Mark Perry. So it's not like he really decommitted because he never technically got into Illinois. Yeah, there was an application error um, from what we were told. So I mean, I guess you could look at you know he wasn't really decommitting. Um, so you know I was not really stealing a guy a commitment. I guess it just poaching. was an application. Yeah, poaching is an application no. error. No poaching. No poaching. All right, quick hits is up next. You're watching GWN. Thanks to our friends at McBride Matt. Stay tuned. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built.
U.S. Open champion Kyvan Gadsden has decided to remain at his alma mater and will become the first full-time member of the Cyclone RTC. Gadsden chose to stay at Iowa State after meeting with Minnesota, Arizona State, Penn State, Northern Iowa, and Northwestern. Along with training for competition, Gadsden will play a major role on Kevin Dresser's staff. Now, this is huge for Dresser, and he was always just saying that, hey, we've got Gadsden on staff, but he never really was locked up. Right. So um, Gadsden has been on, I guess you could call it a recruiting trail. That's what these RTCs now are. That's, <laughs> it's a whole other recruiting aspect for these guys to go out and figure out where you know their best feel would be as an RTC, where they fit well in the coaching staff, because they're going to be important to recruiting. I know Metcalf has always he said that size doesn't matter, but to get a bigger guy on staff, you're not going to see Zadik rolling around with the heavyweights, or would he have been required to roll? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he would have had to, but I mean, if you look at this coaching staff, really heavy in the middle, um, they need, you know, lightweights, they could do a they could maybe pick somebody up there with RTC. They got Gatson to lock that up. I mean, a guy that was, you know, an NCAA champ fighting for, you know, to make a world team. So Gatson is a huge guy to, to stay in Ames. And this one's really personal for us. Kyvan has been a great friend of ours for a long, long time. His dad was to me as well. I'm very excited for him. Very happy that uh, the state of Iowa gets to keep him. Well, it's been two months since Boise State announced it would eliminate their program, but two groups are still working to reverse the decision. Idaho State Senators Chuck Winder and Marv Hagedorn met with University President Bob Kustra, who said his decision was based on the following factors. Now listen closely. Kustra said that there are no other wrestling programs in the Mountain West. There are actually three, Air Force, Wyoming, and Fresno State. He went on to say that wrestling is a dying collegiate sport and the program was failing to succeed. Despite strong support from the community, the thousands of pledge donations, and the wrestling program's history of success, Kustra said there is no future for wrestling at Boise State. The two senators said Custer was steadfast in his decision and that no amount of discussion or options would sway him. According to the letter, Custer suggested the wrestling community put its time and effort into endowing the Boise State wrestling program as a non-varsity club sport. Regardless of what happens to wrestling, this guy has got to go. I've never seen so much ignorance or arrogance from the head of a university. It's a total embarrassment. Yeah, this is uh, giving the college really a black eye. I mean, if you're in that area, there can't be a ton of Boise State fans, you know, running around the football, basketball program. And, and I feel like everybody is a, is a Boise State Bronco fan that, that lives up there. So if you are a wrestling fan and you are at least so, somewhat supported wrestling, you're not going to support the other sports now. If they're willing to turn, you know, turn away from a sport like this that easy because of one guy's, you know, decision, one guy's motive, one guy's agenda. He's an idiot. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, it's not good for Boise State. He's failed to make a single compelling argument. If it's about money, I'll listen. But it's not about money. It's about baseball. It's about Bob Custer's love for baseball and a total disdain for wrestling. Yeah, this is a, there's no really good answers that he's been able to bring of why you would drop wrestling. Some schools, I mean, we can make sense of it, right? But this one, that he doesn't have any good ones. He doesn't have any facts to it. So this is, a, I'd be surprised if someone's not asking more questions. See if we can get him fired. Get him fired, absolutely. We've done it before. If college wrestling is dying, it's because people like this want it to. The schools that actually support their wrestling programs are setting new attendance records every single year. It seems like this decision you know, was made a long time ago. Mike Mendoza was brought in to really kind of be the fall guy. This guy is going in and, and trying to recruit these guys up to the day that they found out that it was canceled. You know, this is uh, really, I feel really bad for Mike Mendoza and obviously the, the, the rest of the staff and the, and the athletes that just got put in this position. All right, now Kale Sanderson's job is still not secure. His contract date came and went. It was June 30th. It was supposed to be renewed or increased. They're still working on it. We hope that Kale Sanderson gets what he so richly deserves, seven championships over eight years. And why is he being paid $175,000? He should be getting more. Kevin Dresser got $300,000 for taking the job at Iowa State. And look what he's done in the short period of time that he's been there. Kale Sanderson should be paid more. The university should respect that position, the coach, and the program, and the results they've enjoyed. For all of us here at Global Wrestling News, I'm Scott Casper. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next week.